What's happening everyone? In this video I'll be covering how to generate randomized passwords using Python. Of course you could easily create a highly secure password by just generating a string of randomized characters of a suitable length, but the problem with those is that unless you're some sort of savant, you essentially need to copy and paste them every time you want to log into your services. So in this lesson we'll be creating easy to remember passwords that are still highly secure. To actually validate the security of our generated passwords, we'll be using a Python library called Password Meter. Password Meter is not a built-in library, and because this is the first lesson I've done where we utilize a third-party library, here in the beginning we'll cover how to install Python libraries to your system. So you first want to open up your terminal or command prompt application. If you're on Mac OS X, hit command space, then type terminal, and click enter. If you're on Windows, hit the Windows key and type command prompt, and hit enter. If you're on Ubuntu, like I'm using, or any other Linux distro, I'm sure you already know how to open up your terminal. Now once you have it open, what you'll type in will depend on how you've installed Python and what environment variables you've changed. The way you'll see it on most websites is simply pip install and then the name of the library, in this case password meter. If this doesn't work, but you've installed Python and can open up the Python interpreter from the command line, you can try calling pip another way. You can write python-m to signify we're calling a built-in Python module, then the name of the module, in this case pip, then install, and the library we're trying to install. In this case, again, password meter. If you're getting authentication errors on either of those methods, the last thing to try, if you're on Mac OS X or Linux, is to call the original pip install password meter, but as the sudo user. This will require you to enter in your operating system password, and is essentially attempting to install the library using a higher level of privileges. This is the way I need to install the package since I'm using the operating system version of Python that came with my Ubuntu installation. If none of those methods work, I would recommend just searching Google for the error your terminal application is spitting back to you when you try to run the command. Having worked as a Python developer, I can tell you all the errors you're getting are probably addressed somewhere on Stack Overflow. If worse comes to worse, to drop a comment below with your error and I'll try to help you out. So now that we've installed password meter, just to make sure everything is working, we're going to open up the Python interpreter and try to import it. No errors here, so we're good. Type in exit with open and closing parentheses to exit out of the interpreter. Now that we've successfully installed password meter, we can begin writing the actual password generator. Switching to our coding editor, we'll first cover all the import statements. We'll first be importing the test function from password meter. Pass an input string, test will return both the password strength as well as advice on how to improve the password. We'll be ignoring the advice portion, but the strength will be a flow between 0 and 1. The closer to 1.0, the more secure the password. The second import will be the URL open function of the URL lib2 library. We'll be using this method to download a list of 479,000 English words we'll be using in the generation of our passwords. The third import will be the isFile function of the OS library. We'll use this method in conjunction with URL open to check if we need to download the English words file if it hasn't already been saved to our hard drive. The fourth and final import will be the choice and randint functions of the random module. Now that we have our imports out of the way, we can begin writing the actual script. We'll begin by first checking to see if the file words.txt is in our current working directory. If not, we'll be downloading and saving it. The actual URL string barely fits on the screen, so I've posted it down in the description. I'd recommend just copy and pasting it into your code to ensure you don't encounter any errors later on. You should also open the URL in your browser and check the file yourself to get an idea of what you'll be downloading. After the script is run at least a single time, the file will also be present on your hard drive in the same folder as the Python script, saved under the name words.txt. After we've checked to ensure we have the file, we'll be opening it, reading it, and splitting it into a list. Since the file has a single word per line, and we're splitting on the backslash n, or end line character, our new words list will be of length 479,000, give or take, where each element is a single English word. We'll then be creating a list of special characters. Many services allow more than just exclamation point and question mark, but we'll be restricting it to just these two to make the passwords easier to remember and ensure they work for all websites and services. We'll now be creating our main function, which will run whenever this Python script is called from the command line. Inside main, we'll be creating a new password using a create password method we'll implement in a second. We'll then pass that newly created password into the test function of the password meter library. As we explained earlier, test returns both a strength as well as some password strengthening advice. These two elements are returned wrapped in a tuple, where the strength is the first of the two elements, so we'll be saving that to a variable named strength, and ignoring the advice by saving it to an underscore. 
We'll then conclude the main function by printing out our new password, as well as the strength, as reported by the test function. We've now covered everything we need to actually write the password generator function. As we said earlier, we'll be implementing it inside of a function named createPassword. The function will be passed three parameters, numWords, numNumbers, and numSpecial, set to 2, 4, and 1 by default, respectively. The meanings of these variables will be cleared up after we've written the body of the function. Inside the function, we'll first be declaring an empty string variable named passString. This will be the variable which will hold our password. We'll then enter into three separate for loops, each constructing a single portion of the password and appending it onto the end of the passString variable. In the first for loop, we'll iterate for as many words as we want in our password, in our case defaulting to a value of 2. On each iteration, we'll randomly select an English word, convert it to lowercase, and call the capitalize function, which will convert the first letter of the word to uppercase. In the second for loop, we'll iterate for as many numbers as we want in the password, on each iteration randomly selecting a number from 0 to 9. In the third and final for loop, we'll iterate for as many special characters as we want at the end of the password, in our case defaulting to just 1. On each iteration, we'll randomly select either the exclamation point or the question mark. At the end of the function, we'll return the newly created password. We can now switch back to terminal to test out our password generator. As we can see, with default settings for numWords, numNumbers, and numSpecial, we get passwords in the range from 0.8 to about 0.9 on the strength scale. Some simple calculations reveal that, with these settings, a malevolent hacker would need to check nearly 250 trillion combinations, in the best case, if they wish to crack one of these passwords, which, for any normal person, should be definitely secure enough. To find the password that suits you best, you should just keep running the script until you come across a combination that sticks in your head the easiest, and preferably, if you need to write it down anywhere, write it on a piece of paper you keep somewhere in your house, not on a file on your computer. You can also play around with the input settings to change the amounts of words, numbers, or special characters, and as long as the string is above a 0 0.8 or so, it's probably secure enough to use in practice. That takes us to the end of this quick video, guys. If you enjoyed it, definitely hit that thumbs up button. And consider subscribing if you'd like to see more Python utilities, algorithms, and data structures in the future. If you're already subscribed, drop a comment if you'd like to request any content to see in the future. And I'll see you guys next time.